All right, so welcome to not, not a casted game by Hub. This game we've got Brody. He's in his EBR. He's playing Steps. So Steps, pretty good map for the EBR. You've got a lot of room to move around a map. Um, lots of APC are loaded for Brody here. We just quickly look at the team lineups. Lots of lots of meds. So one Striv. On hit on our uh, Brody side, so this is gonna be a very mobile, uh, mobile game. So Brody's gonna quickly scout the one line. Sorry, mid, and he's just doing a run to try to s s watch for any tanks that are crossing. Mid can't spot anything. He does spot the badger though. He slows down for the Badger, makes sure that he gets a counter push, takes a shot, pens the Badger once. So, already a good start. If we look at the, the team lineup from the other team, far less mobile than what what Brody, who Brody has. So, the entire team is sending to free line, and by now it should be pretty clear that the enemy team, they're playing the opposite side at 8 9 line, so, you know, the Struve vendors S. SCB strip super conquer going back to defend along with the 60 TP everyone else order fast meds and are pushing in as well i7 is still playing mid maybe he's trying to try to play anchor I don't know pens a shot against the i7 and makes sure he doesn't get lit so so the i7 rushes out straight into mid and he tries to dive into cover it doesn't get punched for that which is surprising no bad just getting punched instead Bad just losing a lot of health, getting lit, and there's not really much that he can do. He doesn't, I don't think anyone is lit, either that, or he's just rushing to get out and recover. As I7 spotted a few meds and some of them exposed as, you know, they're also attempting a big play on um, Brody's cap. is going to take the K7 area, and, you know, there's not going to be many tanks that are left here, so this area is finished. 2684, their team's rushing over to camp. They needed to wipe out the I-7 quickly, which they did. Get to track on the 2684 and um, two more shots follow in as well. To, it's in a pretty bad spot with being in the middle of the field caught out with no support. And no pressure on Brody's team in the south. It's already on 1.7k assist with 800 damage so Brody's moving back to his base to defend and also um, put some pressure on the tanks that were trying to push his base which you know between the Struz and Super Conk and the 60 TP you know they were always going to have a pretty strong hold here Brody finds the rest of the enemy team which is moving back to try to defend the base but really, they're not, they can't really do much at this point, and they've got, you know, full map control. The enemy team finds itself stuck in the A to, A to O line, and um, basically, with the Super Kong CTP Struve pushing up, they're gonna find themselves shot from like all angles. And it's just gonna be a matter of time before this is wrapped up. Yeah, it's only 4 0 with that. And it, it is a pretty hefty hit points difference, about 5k. But... You know, they don't have map to work with at all. They've got nothing. They can't really hide anywhere either. Like, if they were hiding maybe G corner to K corner, then maybe they might be able to do something, but they're not there at all. So they're just gonna be isolated in pockets and then they're gonna be picked off. So Brody's just going to have a little skirmish, dance with the other EBR as well. And they're going to try to knock out, you know, the object Cran and the EBR corner first. Takes a shot at SCP, but takes return fire from the EBR who ends up getting picked off by his own team. And now they just send it in. This is basically clean up job from here. Circles to 140 unlucky to not get a pen there. 
But the rest of the team, his team's got him anyway before he can reload. So gets him around him with a sets him on fire, and kills him with a fire. Fly it. Now looking for the Sean Lai boss. Manages to take that shot. Batchat's shooting him from the hill. Knocks out one of his wheels, but you know he's getting spawning on the bat chat. Bat chat fires another one, miss at his team, and you know he shoots the turret. Now here's the question: Is the bat chat fully clipped or not? I didn't quite think quite well. No, it wasn't. Fires one into Brody, but you know he was never gonna reload in time. And that's a game: 3.6k damage, 2.5k spawning. The biggest call out from that was you know the movement from Brody like you know he made it he made a pretty aggressive uh, scout down mid we didn't see Bossatron on the other side but because he made that run and he spotted the Badger and the IS-7 you know he was able to work out okay there's one there's no mediums crossing here so they're definitely not pushing the two line and also with only spotting the Badger and the IS-7 here what that meant was that you know the 60TP the Super Kong the strip, they all had the information to know. All right, we need to set up to defend this cap because no one's here, so they're all, all playing eight, eight lines. So, the, the early information that he got, yeah, he probably could have got a lot more information if he didn't try to snipe the badger. Like, you know, damage is always good, as good, good, and all, but you know, if he got uh, if there was a way for him to get even more information about maybe behind the base, then yeah, um, they would have been able to in my I, I guess in this game it would have been marginal but it would have been in good good for like the pushing tanks so that they know how aggressively they can push what kind of positions that they can take as well at the same time you know the EBR he was sending it along the eight line so yeah he might have been helping his team scout down the eight line but in reality he's not really getting much information for his team so by the time you know these badges and I sevens got pushed on it was too late and Brody's team was a lot more mobile than the enemy team. You know, they were able to make full use of it. They were able to attack the base a lot sooner. So much so that, you know, some of them, they decided to panic and they decided to run for a field, give away their tank. So the game was 4-0. Brody's team was up a hell of a lot of head points and off that the game was over. Like not only, like in some situation being down 4-0, it's hard to win, but it's possible. But because they were all stuck in the in in one corner of the map, and they were also split up as well as that, you had some tanks here, you had some tanks here. There's just no holding. It's just basically a cleanup job. And you know the shots taken by Brody at the end of the game were pretty 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 good. So yeah, thanks for that, Brody. That was an awesome replay and a good showcase of like the you know the power of the EBR and what you can do with active scouting with that tank. Alright, next game we have myself. I'm playing the 140 on Prokhorovka. Looking at the team lineups, you know, both are. Uh, except for the U100. Every tank is. You know, not a tank you wouldn't want to bring into a. a um, Prokhorovka fight. So. The team's kind of decided okay, we want to play on the. Um, hillside of Prokhorovka, so most of us are going there. Grill is just going to B2 by himself with the EBR, and you know, usually when you're as, as such a vulnerable tank as the Griller, you don't want to be in the situation where you're discarded by an EBR. It's if you get rushed, it's very easy for you to die. He realizes his mistake, and you know, he's crossing, but is would it be too late? Next shot against EBR just turns out to be a damage trade. And um, 
so they're controlling this mid ridge here at the same time our team is slowly moving over but we've taken a little bit more damage than we needed we're already down 1k hit points right now i'm just trying to look for shots in the any lucky turret shots against the centurion that might not have covered but wasn't able to find any in the meantime we have we've got some tanks in the hill scb is taking a shot at Players need to rouse, so it's 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 forcing them back. It'll kind of need to push this while you know there's not that many people there. Two seven seven decided to dive into the low ground here, and um, looking at the situation, I'm thinking, oh, this is not good. We're, you know, okay. We might be up a bit of hit points right now, but in a way they. They're more likely to have map control over us than anything. Plus, you know, if they if there's some brave tank, because they know where the EBIs are, EBRs, right? They know roughly know where our tanks are. So if some brave tank or some play with game sense thinks, right, okay, you know what? Two line, if we spot that much on the zero line, two line is free. I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna chip away at the Gorilla E100 and Super Kong. Then you know they're gonna do that, right? So, I was thinking about playing the island, trying to snipe them there, especially since I've only got 722 health left. Like, you know, if you have a gun, try and keep it in the game, right? So, as we can, as, as I was mentioning earlier, the 140 is doing a push, pushing in the EBR. You know, there's nothing that the EBR can do here. That and the 140, where it is, should also be quite hull down as well. So, after realizing that, you know, they're not quite pushing over yet, I, just, I decided, okay, you know what, I might just contest mid again and see what happens. Probably might not have been the wisest thing to do. Like I, I, I thought there might have been a push coming. Turns out it isn't. The 140 actually does get hit a little bit, which is good. The EBRs somehow manage to um, scout where it is and not get punished for it. I take a shot at, at the SDB. This second shot gets me. So any shots that I can get that can help our team clear the O line is super important right now. EBR then pushes on our EBR as well, and um, yeah, our EBR is in a, bit, a lot of trouble. Now these down, basically anything that's on the east side of the rails is in a lot of trouble. Sorry, west side of the rails. Is is in a lot of trouble. SCB pushes. Um no. Probably not the best idea, but at the same time, you know, since you're outnumbered in this area, or since you're obviously outnumbered since most of the guns. Our team has taken a um, kill position. You know, it probably would have been better for him to wait, let the EBR spot whatever's on the on in the day six and let the Opel 140 pepper him down, which is kind of what's happening right now. Like the E100s is taking a few big hits and it's gonna die soon. EBR's here, mm, I'm not sure about this though, because you know, you could easily be working working down the they work down the EBR, they work down the gorilla. So I was thinking, all right, they, because the grill is there alone, he can't cross over. He, if, if he does, he dies. He's basically gonna contribute, you know, nothing else to this game really. Well, maybe he gets a shot on the five A, but you know, he doesn't. He, he's gonna get outspotted, outgunned, and he doesn't have any armor to withstand anything. So he's gonna die. So I'm going, okay, I need to anchor at the A9 position. He takes out the grip, the object 140 though. So, you know, I feel like. This could have been easily winnable by them if they weren't in the throwing, weren't, weren't throwing away tanks in situations where they could have been more, a bit more patient and won the game that way. Just to say, four pushes to Griller. Griller's got no chance here. He's he can get shot at from tanks at F F6 along with the object and the EBR. There is nothing that he can do. So this will leave. A6 completely exposed, I just take a shot at 2684. You know, do what I can, do what I can, what damage I can, because that damage, like, this is a very close game. They've got better map control right now, and they've got better hit points. So, you know, I need to try to look for, like, a hold, hold down position that where it's easier for me to dodge shots, and, you know, the A0 corner is it, especially in the med where you can just make use of riches. Takes a shot on the side in the 2684. Takes another one. So I'm gonna my role here is to just try to survive and spot enemy enemy tanks here. So the 2684 dodges into dives into the low ground. 
you know, to try to avoid shots for, shots for myself. The 5A is also trying to look better shots for me, but, you know, since we're both trying to peak a ridge, and, you know, we've both got decent turret armor, like, we're not really going to do anything against each other. We're going to spot each other, sure, but we're not really going to do anything beyond that. The thing I'm most worried about is that the 2684 and the EBR decide to come, which they did. EBR takes a free shot, you know, it just... I can't commit, he doesn't have the help. Meantime, we finally win the hillside. So the Batchan and the Centurion try to push over the rails. Try to get some damage to the seven. So in the meantime, you know, our team, none of our tanks are particularly healthy. Hit points is pretty evenly balanced. The game is quite evenly poised, but the thing that's helping us is, you know, the bat chat is finally able to break through and he can damage anything on the six line. They don't, they don't, except for the EBR, they don't really have anything that can gain the kind of vision that they need. Oh, the, well, there's the EBR. So it's very important. If our, if our team kills the EBR, that would be excellent. We lose a super comp. I push over, spot the 264. I look for a shot, doesn't pen. And this is a very dangerous situation at 37 HP. With, with the 5A, if I actually died here, I think it would have been game over. Like they would have been able to get secure the map control they need and they wouldn't wouldn't be able to claw this one back. We're down 2k hit points right now, so it's a very tense situation. Bounce a shot from the 5A. Terror advancement imaginary heat. We've got bat chat, Udez left. So in this situation, if, if it were a clan war game, they win just off, off, off the EBR, really. EBR spots the bat chat. So, 277, and ideally would have had a shot on the, the, the bat chat. But, you know, he was, Kraft was actually able to get the EBR, which is super important. Now we've got the vision advantage. That's if Karaf is able to get away and stay alive. And against the 277, which is quite fast, that's easier said than done. Just here this is one. So the 2684 goes, you know what, I'm just gonna commit and keep pushing. Find another one to 2684. And I need to play around this ridge. 5A misses. Miss. 2684 does end up getting the kill in the end. All we just need is are you pro hitting your shots? On the hill, the U does. Because, you know, that. That, that last shot, if, if, it, if, it, if it connected and penned, would have killed the 264. Manages to damage himself falling into the river. Batchat crosses over, can't find a 277. Because, you know, I guess that's where most of the action is. But at least the Batchat, because the 277 moved, he's able to break out now. So, the Batchat's got vision. It's not that easy for... Unless, of course, if the 25A and the 277 works together here, it's not very easy to. Um, win this. for them to win. But, you know, the 5A is alone, and Prokhorovka being the map he is, it is, you know, all of a sudden, this game's turn from a two, going 2k down to us having the advantage because we've got a bad chat. And. And, and a lot of bushes that we can use here as well. I use got to connect this shot on the 268 boards. Very much down to him. He can take a shot from the 5A, but he can't take take a shot from the 2684. So if they are able to isolate the 2684, oh, he takes a shot and kills the 2684. Brilliant. So that just leaves the 5A in play, and that's it. So, I, so both of them are hunting down the 5A. Carafe can't take a shot from the 5A. Ah, you can. Shoots a 5A once. Oh, and 5A misses. That's a very... He's missed a lot of critical shots. Like, okay, maybe it's not that easy at, like, 300 meters from a 5A. But, you don't hit those shots and you just lose. Like, you, you had an opportunity to pull this game back, and uh, you just don't take it. Like, granted, you know, RU Pro can still take a hit from the 5A. So it's, even then, it's not that easy, but it goes from 
tenaciously possible to basically impossible for the five to pull this one back. Are you pro den is able to proxy spot the five A? And um give it give a chance for Karaf to basically aim it at the five A, bounces his shot against the five A. And are you gets the shot through the rail through through the rails. And um yeah, that's the game. Oh boy, that was a very tense game. Needed. Uh, there was a few mistakes from me at the beginning when you know I decided to hang around and play so I shouldn't, and when I pushed the two six eight four on that island the first time. But after that, you know I um playing enough of a stalling game to you know buy my team time and space to be able to kill kill some of the heavy tanks that were would have been problems, and it bought a lot of time for you know the Udes and the bat chat to be able to pull off that win in the end i think karaf and are pro both did like i mean i did 3k here i think karaf and are you pro do also did maybe three three k as well three to four k so they had really good games as well um that was a pretty awesome game of on prokhorovka so yeah that's basically some of the games that i'm casting from ranked if you are keen on being cast on this channel, feel free to, you know, send replays to me either on my Discord, like through DM, or you can send it to my email at hubu.wan at gmail.com. Anyway, uh, that's it for now. I'll be back with some more ranked gameplay. Alternatively, if there's also some, you know, clan games, like, you know, skirmishes or advances that you're keen on send getting casted getting me getting me to review i'm more than happy to anyway take care see you all bye for now